Hello, my name is Rafael Ramirez, and this video is a recording of a presentation I made as a keynote speaker to the British Academy of Management conference in June this year, uh, based on the fact that our program, the Oxford Scenarios program, won an award from the British Academy of Management. And this presentation is about how we designed the program. The conference was attended about, by 74 people, a lot of them young scholars who want to improve their design of their pedagogy to become better teachers. This is the award we won. Uh, the award was for the design of the program, which is based on live cases. And the idea is very simple. We get real executives and real policymakers from different organizations to come to our program with a conundrum, and our participants work on that conundrum to learn scenario planning. And in doing the research, we're, we're writing papers about this, we found out that actually at the beginning of uh, business education, a lot of the cases people used were life cases. And it was only when business school education became professionalized with grants from the Ford Foundation uh, and others uh, that the case study became a sort of dead case study analysis. And our program, which uh, was designed by many people, including myself, has given a new life to the uh, live uh, case method. So I'm going to walk you through the design of the program. And we came uh, to do this program uh, back uh, in 2004. So it's now uh, about to get into its 15th year. And it has run uh, in short versions at the beginning in Templeton College, then when executive education in, the, in Oxford went from Templeton College to the Said Business School, we extended the program to a five-day program, which we now run um, twice a year. The, um, the history of scenario planning is uh, shown in this diagram. Uh, on the vertical axis, you see the number of peer-reviewed publications in English. And on the, uh, temp the, the, on, on, the uh, ex uh, on the flat axis, you see the number of, of years. And you can see that there were a reasonably small number of articles published per year uh, in scenario planning till about 2003, 2004. And then the um, activity took off, and now there's over 4,000 articles published in English alone uh, in uh, scenario planning in the literature. Um, we believe that the reason for this shift was 9-11, uh, the financial crisis, uh, Brexit, uh, the Middle East uh, complexities, uh, globalization, uh, the Trump election, and so on and so forth. We uh, started the program right at the time that there was a takeoff of how scenario planning uh, became a major part of the strategy field. So I told our participants, particularly the young uh, scholars in the conference, that if they want to be an award-winning a program, uh, a good starting point is to be lucky in your timing. We were extremely lucky that we started the program right at the time that scenario planning took off. And we uh, basically rode that wave, pro possibly a bit contributed to it. And so the scenario planning uh, program has done very well uh, over that uh, period of time. Now, uh, this is an a, a example of the type of participants that come to our program. This is from the last program in spring of 2000. And, uh, uh, 18. Uh, every 2% is one person. Uh, we do have uh, quite a lot of variety from one iteration to the other. In this particular uh, session, there were uh, several British uh, uh, colleagues, uh, Canadians, uh, Dutch, and then a whole host of uh, different uh, nationalities. We also break this down by age, and we have uh, relatively young uh, people, some of the 25 to 29 year olds are either staff people in big multinationals working with scenario planning, sometimes uh, mature doctoral students working with scenario planning in different uh, research units, and we go all the way to uh, the 60s, sometimes we have people uh, in their 70s attend the program. So there's a wide variety. Uh, we, in this cohort, we only had one third of uh, women. We tried to uh, aim to have 50-50. Uh, and uh, we work very hard at that, but we don't always uh, succeed. In terms of the fields that they come from, it's a very wide variety of fields in this particular cohort. There were quite a lot of people from government and intergovernmental uh, organizations, 
uh, finance, uh, let's see, uh, uh, um, a lot of banks um, and other uh, lending agencies, um, uh, mining companies, oil and gas uh, uh, companies. Sometimes we get more uh, consultants, sometimes we get uh, more people from uh, uh, NGOs than we have in this case. Uh, often we have uh, colleagues from other uh, universities, researchers, professors, and so on and so forth. This variety of uh, ages, professions, countries means that there's a very big uh, set of learning styles in the classroom and we have to attend in our design of the program with all of them. So uh, some years ago my boss, uh, the uh, Dean of Executive Education, uh, suggested that uh, I talk with some people from a company called Delta 7 uh, who were very helpful and this is the uh, very big poster that they designed. Uh, on uh, capturing what our program is about. And what I'm going to do in this presentation is I'm going to walk you through the essence of what is in this uh, very helpful poster that captures uh, some of the key elements of the design. Um, these are the main topics in that poster. There's others that uh, we, I'd be happy to talk with anybody that wants to visit me in Oxford about. But uh, these are the ones that I'm going to talk about here. And I'm going to spend the rest of the presentation walking you through all of them. And the idea is that the design of a, of a, of a program that is now an award-winning program obeys to pretty rigorous social science and uh, humanities uh, scholarship. So there's scholarship behind the design and the design enables better, more rigorous, more scholarly, acceptable scenario planning practices by the participants that come to our program. So I'll talk you through each of these in a moment. The first one is that the program is designed as an inquiring system. That means that we take every individual that comes to the program, the three faculty that teach it, the six facilitators that help us, the invited guests, and all of the life case executives that lend us their cases, to be inquirers. And the textbook that we use is from uh, Wes Churchman, who was one of my doctoral supervisors, which is this wonderful book, The Design of Inquiring Systems. And the idea is that the classroom has to be designed an inquiring system for everybody. Everybody has a different role. The participants who come inquire about their own practice uh, back at home or with their clients. Uh, the facilitators and the faculty inquire about our own practices and we are all uh, learning together. And the idea is that an inquiring system has to be designed. A second aspect about this is that we, we, we look at the classroom as a transitional space where new things can be treated and ex experienced and tested in a uh, safe environment. And this comes from a long tradition of research from the Tavistock Institute on transitional spaces. These two books by Gilles Amado and uh, two colleagues, Anthony Ambrose and uh, Leopold Vancina, articulate the scholarship between the transitional space. And the idea is that you come to Oxford, you try out something new, guided by the faculty, helped by a peer community in your own learning way, helped by other learning ways, which has been designed as an inquiring system. And if you don't uh, want to implement it back at home, it, it will be fine because you have tested what it would be like to do it and in the end you decide that this is not the right time or the right job to do it in. But if you do want to implement it back at home, you have done a trial run. There's a very famous uh, citation of somebody looking at um, a, a business school saying they don't come with practice fields. Well, this is a practice field in the classroom so you can practice safely in our transitional space what you're going to possibly apply back when you go to the office. Um, a third aspect is that uh, there is no one format, but there's many formats. And we have a sort of multi-piece circus where some people are learning by looking at the clown and others are learning uh, by looking at the elephant in the, in, the, in the circus. And there's too much in the classroom for any one participant, but every participant will find enough to learn with. And we treat all of our participants as reflective practitioners. They are practitioners in their own field. They come to Oxford and they reflect on their practice. Some of them have done scenario planning and are dissatisfied with it. Some of them have done scenario planning and want to up their game. Some of them have been sent because the organization thinks they might want to do uh, scenario planning and we help them explore under what conditions it would be uh, uh, suitable and acceptable. So uh, we do not think of our uh, participants as the audience. 
We do not think of them as empty vessels that we fill. We think of participants as reflective practitioners who are there to be educated with our help. Um, finally, we are involved also in a rigorous and scholarly uh, activity. Uh, this is a set of wonderful books that um, Eric Trist, who was my master's thesis supervisor in Canada, uh, call, uh, edited with a number of colleagues on the history of the Tavistock Institute here in the UK. And the idea is that when you're doing social science, you engage with uh, uh, social reality. Uh, you use social reality partly as your database, but you don't have a sort of uh, grab and run model of uh, research where you grab the data and run away and nobody ever hears about it. You engage back with the community that has generated the data and help with it. So we are very much in the view that scenario planning is based on social science and has to socially engage with the practitioners and those they serve. And there's a lot of scholarship uh, in these books that supports that. Um, we have this live case uh, arrangement, which was uh, originally uh, suggested by one of uh, my colleagues in the, in the faculty. And um, we have had a wonderful executives and senior people from everything from the National Breast Cancer Coalition in the US. Uh, we've looked at the future of peer review with the Royal Society. We've looked at uh, the future of humanitarian work with uh, Mercy Corps out of Oregon, various NHS trusts, the future of, of Chatham House. Titan is a, a Indian uh, company that is a big jewelry and watch uh, retailer, uh, very well known uh, uh, corporates, Orange, uh, uh, BMW, etc. We've looked at uh, the future of fields like the Royal Society and so on and so forth. And the idea is people from these organizations come to us, they lend us a real issue that they're working with. It could be the future of um, uh, infrastructure for Helsinki or the future of diabetes in the uh, UK national health system. Uh, or the future of a university such as Southampton. And we work with our participants on their case uh, to learn scenario planning. We've been doing research uh, not only on how our participants learn, but with the executives from these organizations, and they also have de derived value from lending cases to us. So one of the um, things that this design does is it broadens the impact that a business school can have, not only to the people in the classroom, but to the people from the life case uh, uh, situations. Um, the book that uh, is behind this was written by uh, myself with my colleague Angela Wilkinson, uh, Strategic Reframing the Oxford Scenario Planning Approach. And at the core of this is that uh, scenario planning is basically a social as well as a cognitive activity. You have to do this with other people. And so we apply the methodology of the book, and there's a whole chapter on the book about how to teach scenario planning specifically and how to get people to learn it, uh, where it's very clear that we do not think of our participants as the audience. We are not in the BBC, we're not broadcasting. We are learning uh, and we use the program not only for, to help them to learn, but also for us to learn uh, continuously on how to improve the pedagogy, the uh, practice, uh, and uh, the way in which the two uh, come together. Um, we attend to emotion. This is a wonderful book by Suzanne Langer on uh, feeling and form. Uh, how does it feel to uh, come to Oxford? How does it feel to uh, have to go back and justify the sometimes considerable investment that uh, organizations sending people from the Philippines or Brazil or North America to us uh, uh, um, have to uh, justify uh, how do they use these emotions that uh, the future can bring, hope, fear, and so on, to become uh, usable and, uh, and practical in their own uh, practices. Um, we have a peer-reviewed program. So the program is a program where uh, an external reviewer, sometimes from universities, often very good practitioners from different parts of the world. We've had people from uh, South Africa, North America, as well as many Europeans, uh, to come and tell us how it looks like from a 
solid reflective practice perspective, but we also always have uh, an internal Oxford University reviewer. And just like we know that uh, peer review can improve uh, the uh, publications that are submitted to a journal uh, and eventually published, we also think that peer review has helped us. And a lot of the design innovations that we do in the program, and sometimes we change the program from one iteration to another by 10%, often come from suggestions from these uh, peer review uh, colleagues. So uh, we are now writing uh, um, um, scholarly papers on the research we're, we're doing with the participants, on the participants, and with the uh, live cases and on the, on, the, on the cases. These are two examples of, of uh, papers that were presented in conferences that are now being translated for publication. And we are attending to how well our program helps the people that have come to learn scenario planning to take that learning and translate it into use back in their own home organizations. Thank you very much. This is my email. If you want to contact us uh, about the pedagogy and the design and the program, please feel free to contact me. Uh, we were delighted to have the uh, opportunity to speak at the British Academy of Management. Uh, th this will be on their website. This will also be on our uh, business school website. And uh, we hope that uh, this leads to better pedagogy and better scenario planning. Thank you very much.